Have you ever blown it big time and wished you had the opportunity to try again? Well, I think that's happened to all of us. Hi, I'm Gina with Hope and Cope. This is my Serenity Blueprint. I developed the Serenity Blueprint during the years of my husband's addiction in order for me to stay sane. And the Serenity Blueprint is a four-step process. I use the acronym CALM, which stands for control your thoughts, accept reality, look to God, and maximize forgiveness. And today we're going to talk about step two, which is accepting reality. In the Old Testament of the Bible, there's a great story about the patriarch of the Jewish and Christian religions. It's Father Abraham. Most of you are probably somewhat familiar with Abraham. And I'm going to tell you a real, I'm going to really summarize a really long story for you and kind of let you know where I'm going with this story. So Abraham was promised a child. He and his wife Sarah were barren and they were promised a child by God, which he did not say as soon how soon that child would come. And they ended up waiting years and years and years for this promised child. And they were very old. Don't picture them in their 30s. Picture them very old. So I think the promise came when they were, he was in his 70s. And by the time the promise was f- fulfilled, I think he was a 90, something like that. And so even though God had promised Abraham this child, he and Sarah took it upon themselves after multiple years of waiting, they took it upon themselves to try to fulfill this prophecy through a different means. If you want to know all about the story, you can go into Genesis and read it for yourself. But needless to say, it was not God's plan. God told them after they did this that that was not going to be the way he promised for Abraham's uh, destiny to be fulfilled and they were just going to have to still hurry up and wait a little longer. So then when finally their beloved Isaac was born and the prophecy was fulfilled in, in due time, God called Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac on an altar in order to prove to God that he loved him the most or loved him more than he loved Isaac. So Abraham, getting this word from God of what to do, he set out right away to fulfill God's directive to him. And I know that this had to be a terrible, terrible, gut-wrenching directive, gut-wrenching act of obedience. But Abraham believed with all of his heart that this child was God's gift to him and it was part of God's divine prophecy to make Abraham's children into a nation that would bless the world and that there would be so many members of this family coming from this one son that it would be as many as the grains of sand on the seashore or as many as there are stars in the sky. And so what Abraham deduced was that even though God was telling him to make this sacrifice, that God himself was able to raise Isaac from the dead in order to fulfill his prophecy. So he had failed the first test of waiting, but he certainly passed the second test of faith and obedience to God. So Abraham kind of messed up in the beginning. Well, I say beginning. I'm sure it was after long years of waiting, but he messed up and did not stay faithful to wait on God in having a child. But once he learned his lesson, once he saw that he could not force God's will to take place, he couldn't force God's hand, he learned to just submit and be faithful and trust God at what he said and to be obedient above all things. Obedience is better than sacrifice. He learned that God wanted his obedience more than anything else. And Abraham really was faithful when the time came to prove that he loved God the most 
and or loved God, I keep saying that wrong, to prove that he loved God more than he loved Isaac and to be obedient. The scripture I have for you today is Hebrews 11, 17 through 19. It says, It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. Certainly not to the extent that Abraham was tested, but I too have had to lay my children on the altar of my heart and sacrifice them in obedience to God, to His will. Honestly, this will probably happen to each and every one of us if we truly want to follow God and bring glory to His name. Are there realities in your life that you find almost impossible to accept? I just want to assure you that accepting reality is still easier than constantly, constantly denying the facts. We can make all kinds of tragic mistakes trying to deny the truth of our circumstances. Dear friends, it might take supernatural intervention, but if you ask God to help you to accept reality in the the hardest places of your life, the ones that, that are the most challenge for you, I believe that He will help you and that you will begin a path of healing and acceptance. This may be really hard, so don't give up. Just, tr- you know, you try once and it's too painful and you don't want to try again. I'm just encouraging you, I'm imploring you to bring these things to God and to ask Him to help you to accept reality. Through that, you will gain a measure of peace in your life. In a very familiar Bible verse, Romans 8:28, the Bible tells us that God will work things out for our good. That doesn't mean he will work things out the way we have them planned or the way we want them to work out, but they will work out for our good and for God's glory. This week, I want you to think of just one thing that is extremely hard for you to accept and begin to take it to God and ask Him to help you accept reality and begin the path of healing. I know that's not easy. I know it's really a hard thing to ask, especially when these are things that we are used to tamping down. We're used to not addressing. We're used to not facing them. We're used to keeping them hidden in a closet. I know it's not easy, but I just want you to try this week just on one thing. There might be multiple things in your life that are a real challenge to talk about or accept or think about or face, but just pick one this week and try to work on it. Pray about it. Take it to God and ask him to help you. And I really hope that this Bible study today was helpful. It is always my intentions with every video that I produce. And also in the description box, I always try to add some extra encouragement for you because I know these topics are not easy. And if you like this video and you can think of someone else it might help, I would really appreciate it if you would share it. And don't forget that I'm making content twice a week these days. And I'm always thinking about you and praying for you. And I love you. God bless.